New statistics just in. The listeners to The Alan Handelman Show share these positive qualities. You're more intelligent and generally better looking than most people your age. You have a higher income, and you're more likely to spend it on having fun. So congratulations. You're part of the most sought-after demo in radio. It's great to have you back. You've heard me over the years talk about really cool electronics and devices and things that were, you know, must-have things for Christmas. We always or had interest in that. Many of you have an interest in that, and we've been doing that for decades. But recently, probably now over the last year or so, you've heard me talk a lot about the Sea Crane Company. You've heard me talk about the products that I have that I just love, the Oh Wow products, things you didn't even know that existed especially around radio and audio. And Bob Crane is back with us to talk about the very latest from the Sea Crane Company. Bob, great to have you back. Well, Alan, thank you very much for a great introduction, and uh, thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure. Well, you know, since the last time you were on the show, uh, I, I suppose there are trends that you notice from sales and other research that you do. What are some of the new trends what are some of the things you're noticing when people buy audio devices and mp3s and recorders and what what seems to be the trend if there is a trend you can detect well i think overall um it's it's very interesting to see the numbers as they come through over time and radio and radio related products are still strong uh the economy and you know smartphones have affected it but they're still a, a, an incredibly strong base of customers that uh, are still interested in radio. Um, I think it's because radio itself is such a wonderful format uh, to choose as one to, you know, entertain yourself and for news and information. Um, the other thing that's happened recently is there's a lot more interest in our Wi-Fi products. Yeah. Because we've always been uh, tried to have been helpful for getting better signals where the signal is too weak. That's how we started originally in radio. And now we find that the Wi-Fi uh, antennas are very popular. Yeah. So it's surprising uh, uh, what you can do with an antenna. And, uh, you know, uh, my gosh, I mean, I get my Wi-Fi source from 500 feet away, and that's close by some people's standards. You can get it up to a mile away with our antenna with very little work. Um, so I guess I'm bragging already, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to serve those needs and have people phone up and say, wow, it works. <laughs> oh, well, that's true. In fact, I was just looking at some of the, uh, what my listeners purchased from you over the last, uh, six, seven months. And I th believe the Wi-Fi antenna, one of them was the, probably the biggest seller of all. You're right. Yeah, and, and it's extending to, you know, and so we're continuing to dabble. We have a wonderful man here named Isaiah. Uh, we call him Mr. Wi-Fi, I guess, for Mr. lack of a better word. And uh, he is uh, always experimenting, and he has new products he's working on that are just remarkable. They're silly remarkable. They're fun, and they do a good job. Oh, I want to hear about some of those. Well, let's start talking about those Wi-Fi products. Now, the one that we uh, mentioned, and I did several uh, ads on it, was the Wi-Fi Antenna 3, was it called? Yeah, we call it the Super USB Wi-Fi Antenna 3. To yeah. be silly with our name. Yeah. And uh, it's it's kind of good. All you do is uh, it comes with a CD. Uh, if you have Windows 7, you don't even need that. And you just put the CD in. It loads up. It, it's very simple. You plug in the antenna, and you're ready to go. Uh, it's that simple. And so you, what you have is a situation where there's an awful lot of people. I bet 10% of the Wi-Fi people in the world have a weak signal. And for this device to plug it in and all of a sudden you're full speed and faster than you ever thought is, is really remarkable. And that's, you know, that could be up to, uh, uh, oh gosh, even through a lot of walls, a few blocks away you can get a great signal. And then you can actually make contact and get a signal, uh, you know, get internet up to a mile away. I uh, used this. I tested it out in several situations. One is at a hotel where the broadband at the hotel is so slow. It was painfully slow. So I took this device. This is what's amazing, too, because this was inside. It wasn't even that close to anything that I realized was out there. And I just stuck it on the window with a suction cup and plugged it into the USB port. And I found a Starbucks, a uh, Hooters, and I probably a McDonald's, I think was the third one, 
all had great Wi-Fi. I used the Hooters one because it was the closest <laughs> and fastest. And it's free. It's out there. And if you're traveling, even if you're not traveling, I could see a lot of applications for it. Well, sure. And then you have an obligation to visit Hooters, too. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting. And, and thank him for the the, <laughs> the uh, huge yeah. bandwidth. Yeah, uh, and buy a Coke. That's right. <laughs> but, you know, as far as uh, the bandwidth, when you use those other applications, when you use, by the way, that when you use that antenna, you don't need any AC power. The power for the antenna amplification is from the USB port. So you could be actually in your car using it, correct? Yes, you can. You can use it off a laptop or anything else. And, uh, you know, uh, truckers use it. Uh, that's one of, uh, they love that because they, they Typically, they go to a truck stop, and there's a, you know, there's a hundred trucks there, and where's the signal, you know, behind another truck? Well, they just put that in the window, and they're they're happy campers. Then, you know, it, it, again, it's uh, it's a vital thing nowadays. You know, I I remember before we had the antenna, I was out traveling across, oh my gosh, Nebraska somewhere in the country, and I met a girl, and she goes, I, I she was working at a gas station, one of those classic gas stations that look about a hundred years old. And she goes, I just want Wi-Fi. If I had Wi-Fi, then I could work from home. I can do a whole bunch of things I can't do now. Your life opens up. Yeah, and then I thought, boy, you know, I wrote her name down, and I guess I can't remember what happened, but we sent her a catalog. Hopefully she got it and figured it out that all she needed is that Wi-Fi antenna, and she could make it back to town. And that's a huge difference in a person's life, and that, that gives us, you know, the most satisfaction we could ever uh ever get from a customer is that type of situation some of the one application i think would work and i I think people probably are doing this let's say you have wi-fi in your house and you have a neighbor a couple of blocks away that uh, would like to share the cost of the wi-fi you could he could pick it up with his device you give him the passcode and he's got internet that's right, and it's still secure. He can't get into your computer or see what you're downloading or anything like that. It's just It just works fine. And what we found is probably the most common use is I have a, a friend or a mother or a brother that lives next door. And those are ones that are just yeah. wonderful. And I set her up on her email account now. She doesn't have to come over and bug me. Right. <laughs> so that, those are great uh, uses for this. And there's, I bet almost everyone has a use for it if you, if you really figure out or has run into a situation where they needed one. And you could stick it up outside and uh, even uh, buy an extended cable so you could put it high and, uh, you know, as many feet off the ground as you want, 10, 15, 20 feet. The other thing I was going to ask about that is... Is there a transmitter that you sell for the Wi-Fi that you're transmitting throughout your house so it just is a stronger signal overall? You know, that's one of the products we're working on, kind of a repeater. So in other words, if it'll pick up in a window and then rebroadcast uh, throughout the house. We're working on that one. Um, also, it's kind of odd, but we got the idea because the super USB Wi-Fi can be used as a not only receive from a mile away, but can also broadcast up to a mile away. How's that? Well, that one involves someone who's more of a computer nerd. Um, and you go into the settings in your computer and you tell it, uh, you license it to go ahead and rebroadcast the Internet. So you're, you're, you can turn it into a repeater. You do have to keep your computer on. So we're working on a new product related to that that should be pretty spectacular here. Hopefully it'll be out in a few months, but I'm not sure. Now, you all, I think you have a second uh, Wi-Fi antenna booster. I, I noticed in the catalog, I believe, there's another one you have, another besides the, the one I was talking about. We have a small one that plugs right into your USB port, and that one doesn't go quite as far, but it's a re, you know, it helps for, you know, it's very portable. It fits in your hand, and it just plugs in, and you're ready to go. So that one will go maybe a quarter mile. And it's a lot less expensive, about one quarter of the price. What, was the, what is that one called, and what is the other one called, and what are the prices? Oh, my gosh, you're asking me to be smart here. I think the, uh, I, I know, the, obviously, the Wi-Fi antenna 3 is it, but we'll get to it if we don't get to it right now, if you don't have it off the top of your head, I, you know. Um, you know, I think it's just, uh, it's a little, air, it's a little uh, Wi-Fi antenna. I don't see it in here. It's on our website, of course. That's a, yeah, C-Crane. Yeah dot com c crane c r a n e 
com. And as we talk about these devices and you're interested, if you're near your computer, go on the website. And by the way, if you love electronics and devices and you, you like to read reviews and you want to know a lot about these devices before you buy them, the website is great because not only does he have frequently asked questions and manuals to download and reviews and videos and teaching you step by step, you give a very thorough you have a very thorough website, very enjoyable. You really get an idea of what you're buying. It's very honest, and uh, I commend you on that, Bob, too. Well, thank you very much, and that takes a lot of people, um, a lot of hard work, and, you know, when we have a set of questions from a customer, then we start developing answers uh, for that uh, question in the future. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about more must-have cool electronics and gadgets from the C-Crane Company. Many of these devices, Bob Crane designs himself, and again, around radio and audio and shortwave and Wi-Fi. Stay tuned for more of The Alan Handelman Show. And now, here's something from Coors Light for everybody out there who loves summer. I love working on my tan. That girl from the taco stand. Lots of long weekends and twins. I love the red, white, and blue. Backyard barbecues. Cold ones on the beach. Hip, hip, twins. Yeah, have yourself a long, hot summer and an ice-cold Coors Light. Coors Light. Cold. Down. Easy. Rock on. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Hey, it's Alan. I know you're like me when it comes to your dog and your cat. I know you love them, and you wouldn't knowingly feed your dog or cat food with ingredients that weren't good for them. And you certainly wouldn't feed them ingredients that were harmful to them. But when you're buying dog and cat food at the supermarket, it's a crapshoot to what you're getting. Read the ingredients. Don't just look at the colorful pictures and vegetables on the package. And if you see meat byproducts in the list, don't buy it. Just Google what's in meat byproducts. And look at the list. If you see preservatives and fillers and byproducts and chemicals, think twice. If these things have been banned for human consumption... Why would you feed it to your pets? And you're not going to find dog and cat food on the shelf at the supermarket that says all ingredients come from American sources. And that's where the pet pantry at FeedYourPets.com comes in. They offer and deliver only the brands of pet food that are all natural and use holistic human grade ingredients that are wheat and corn free, have no byproducts, no fillers, no chemicals, and guaranteed that all food comes from American sources, not China. So now you're thinking, well, it's gotta be too expensive, but it's not. It's essentially the price you're already paying. Feedyourpets.com, they deliver anywhere you're hearing my voice, but for North Carolina listeners, they deliver free in the Triangle and Triad. And here's how you get $5 off your first order. Use this code, Alan, feedyourpets.com. Remember this website, pass it along to friends, feedyourpets.com. This is Pat Denizio of the Smithereens welcoming you back to more of the Alan Handelman Show. The All-American this is Rock and Roll Radio. Come on, let's rock and roll with the remote. Radio, audio, electronics, and recorders, and all kinds of devices, including LED flashlights and light bulbs and, and uh, just radio that produces big sound from little teeny little speakers. It's amazing, like the uh, Gozo Radio. Talking about cool stuff from the C Crane Company. Bob Crane is with us. And you got the name now of that other Wi-Fi amplifier? Yeah, we call it the Versa Wi-Fi USB Adapter 2. They're always mouthfuls. Right, <laughs> because it's descriptive, you know. Yeah, so it looks like a USB thumb drive with an antenna on it. All right, I want to talk about a couple other uh, products here before we talk about brand new products that you're you got on the drawing board or, or you're starting to offer another one that i think is really exciting and i know people firsthand who have this including myself that love it they think it's the coolest thing they've bought in years 
It's the FM transmitter two. And it is, uh, I'll let you give the details. As always, we've talked about it before, but it's essentially a little thing. In fact, I got it right here somewhere. It's a little thing, two or three inches uh, square, a uh, little antenna. It works on battery or you can plug it in and you put any audio source into it. It could be your Wi-Fi, it could be your TV, it could be an old VCR, anything. And it transmits it in great quality all over your house, into your yard, and it does it with that audio that you would expect from a commercial radio station, not one of those little toy-sounding things you've seen at auto parts stores, you know? That's right. It's um, a lot of care went into making the audio almost broadcast quality. And we've had a couple engineers, you know, uh, remind us of that, which is really fun to have. Um, the other thing... That, you know, to, to what it does, it, it'll put the audio from your smartphone, you know, to your car radio. It'll put your audio from your smartphone to your stereo. It'll do a lot of things that are difficult or require work to figure out how the heck do I do this. And it's broadcast quality in essence. So we, that's what the product does. It's kind of hard to understand sometimes that it's actually a little broadcast station yeah it's fm stereo it's not uh, you know some sacrifice in audio you do keep the fidelity yep and then um the other thing we've had fcc limits the power of this device uh but what we decided to do is if you attach a little 31 inch wire to our antenna then your coverage goes up dramatically that's really with, that's with any fm transmitter not only ours but everyone that uh, is out there so a 31 inch wire and you clip it with an alligator clip or or you know, wrap it around there a whole bunch of times or whatever you need to do to make uh, electrical contact between the antenna and then on the other end just kind of put it on a thumbtack on the wall next to the device and you'll increase the power dramatically 31 inches it's important that it's 31 inches because that's the wavelength of fm is that what it is or that's uh, about the same size as your automotive antenna for fm that's exactly right it's uh, a function of uh uh, of the wavelength. Well, I'm going to do that. And, and you can add, and does it have to be vertical or hor can it be horizontal or does it matter? Generally, vertical is what the receiver is looking for. Mm -hmm. So you can do it horizontal if you have a horizontal antenna on the other side or uh, that type of thing. So it, it's kind of interesting. When you broadcast horizontally, then you want to have a, your receiver should have a horizontal antenna uh, on it. But you can test the difference. Antennas are very inexpensive, like this particular, to make your 31-inch wire. You can use any type of wire. It doesn't matter at all. So the, the cost of developing uh, more horsepower on your FM transmitter is zero. Yeah, very yeah. cool. And yeah. you know, some people might say, well, if 31 inches works, I'm going to put 10 feet. That would defeat the purpose. It would not even work that way. It would probably make it worse. Well, in, in our tests, and we did do tests like that finally, we didn't, uh, not that long ago, we went out and we did field testing out in the field, and that's what we found. If you went to uh, a full wave, uh, which would be about uh, uh, six feet, then it uh, really had no, the distance was equal yeah. to the 31 inch. So it's fascinating the properties of uh, radio antennas. There was no difference. Now, we did document, if you still have questions on this, we did, if you go to our FM Transmitter 2 webpage and you go under uh, Frequently Asked Questions, you'll see little drawings of how to do this. Too. Yeah, and it's, again, ccrane.com, ccrane.com. Dot com. All right, next device. Before, first of all, let's talk about some brand new devices. First of all, I, I, it's interesting that as far as headsets are concerned, I didn't realize there was much improvement in technology. Headsets are headsets. Earbuds are earbuds. You offer two new ones, the Senta 40 wooden headphones and the Senta 9 earbuds. Tell me about them. Well, there's a great story behind her. We have two... Um I would call them young bucks, for lack of a better word, that were pushing me about audio. And mm -hmm. I said, well, if you're so good, why don't you make it yourself? <laughs> and they looked at me like, that's a challenge we'll take. Okay. And I was like, oh, no, now I'm in trouble. So they did a fantastic job. Uh, both of their, they have a Senta 40 headphone and a Senta 9 earbuds. And then the numbers designate the size of the rare earth magnet that they use. And out of the chute, their Senta 40s are probably 
rated that you know if you look at the reviews from audiophiles probably the best made for the money currently really? and that means of all headphones it's remarkable for them to get that achievement on their first try but they had the challenge and they they did it so that that's something that we're really they're very excited about the reviews and, are very strong that's the Santa 40 wooden headphones and wooden headphones i like the whole concept what's behind the idea of using wood well wood has i think a, a certain visual charm that's undeniable the wood we use is a a, a sustainable wood uh, it's a madagascar ebony and it's, so it's just beautiful mm-hmm. uh, very hard wood but it's not the rare type of ebony that you know is against the law <laughs> to to do uh but then all they do is craft it. They work their heck off, uh, their, their everything off to, to get it just the right sound that they wanted. Uh, one of the gentlemen uh, named James is actually going for his master's at, at the local college here in music, and he has an ear that's unbelievable. And that's, that's the education paid off on this one. And Curtis, who's a, a maverick at getting stuff done, they work together as a team. That's important, having somebody with that, with that ear. Because so many times, Bob, even when I was younger, my hearing was probably better. But I always, <laughs> I always would look for the clarity in the high end, in the treble. And it seems in recent years that's what's been sacrificed in a lot of audio devices. Plenty of bass. They're playing into the popularity of bass, but they just seem to overlook the sharpness, the fidelity of the treble. And I notice whether it's your radios that have a bass and treble control to other devices, you think about that, and I appreciate that. Oh, sure. I think everyone loves bass, but I think I love to be able to hear the voices, articulation of a voice, or of a very subtle, you know, violin passage or something. Um, you know, you can really appreciate the difference between a set of headphones or speakers, uh, you know, and how it, how it portrays. So you'll find, uh, I think, guess the imaging of the, the scent of 40 headphones is quite remarkable. And again, it's, um, you know, they're, they've been compared to pretty close to a $200 set of headphones, and they're a fraction of that. Let's talk about something that you're doing as an experiment. Well, you know, it's more than an experiment. I don't know if it's unfolded yet, but you have a new blog that it's great for radio lovers and people who just want to hear a variety of subjects about high-tech issues and other things in life and and radio. And it's a new blog, uh, news.ccrane.com. Tell us about it. I think it's really cool. Well, it's, it's just our first stab. Uh, at opening up and becoming more of a community for radio. We obviously love radio um, as much as probably life itself. And to help, uh, maybe not foster, but have a place to go to leave words uh, would be wonderful. So we're just starting. I looked at it, it looked, a, well, what do I say, a little homogenized for me, so I'm going to go muck it up a little bit, I think, to uh, have some more I like to have honesty with radio, with what comes in, mm-hmm. and that that will really help, I think, because radio is still, uh, well, for me, and I think for a lot of people, is the most remarkable medium uh, available in the world, because it has so many benefits and so few drawbacks. I agree with you. I'd like to know, people under 25 who are listening, how relevant is radio to you? Because that's what the uh, so-called experts are debating. They think people under the age of 25 or 30 have no interest in radio. It's only the internet and downloading. What do you think? Join me on Twitter at If It Rocks or on Facebook under Alan Handelman. Stay tuned for more of The Alan Handelman Show.